you're welcome back. Now, it's a debate that has been sparked by an article uh, published uh, on the internet, which suggested that in spite of all the criticism and, uh, well, all the backlash that this government has faced, the vice president, Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, is actually the best vice president Ghana has had in the Fourth Republic. So we thought, let's put this to the test. Why don't we get some, uh, well, knowledgeable voices to come together and share their thoughts on this opinion? And uh, we're very happy to have uh, uh, two guests in the, uh, on, on this matter, and uh, we'll be introducing you to them uh, shortly. Uh, George is in the studio. Always nice to... Um, uh, Mensah Thompson. Uh, uh, actually, Mensah Thompson is in the studio. And uh, we have uh, Dr. George Dompe of the University of Ghana joining us over the telephone. Uh, Dr. Dompe, thank you for your time. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, my brother. Mm. And uh, in the studio, we have Mr. Mensah Thompson. Now, for this conversation to work, I think we have to establish some very simple ground rules. Uh, we are in an economic crisis. So it, we don't tend to hear people praising members of government. That's not what it, the atmosphere we are in. However, this article claims that whatever you may criticize the vice president for, you would also have to say that he is the one who has achieved the most as vice president. Is this true or not? That's what we want to discuss. Mr. Thompson, uh, thank you for making the time. Uh, I, I would love to start with you. I'm dying to hear what you think of this, uh, this analysis. Uh, well, uh, first of all, very uh, good afternoon and a Merry Christmas to our cherished viewers and listeners out there. Uh, Kojo, it's a very interesting uh, conversation to have, um, but I would like that we look at this conversation purely from um, a scientific point of view so that um, we shy away from needless propaganda and also things that may not be factually accurate. Now, um, the statement seems to suggest that, um, irrespective of the economic downturn that the country is currently being faced with, Dr. Baumia still remains the best vice president this country has ever had. And so to make this comparison, it means you have to at least name the vice president, at least in the Fourth Republic. Sure. So under the Fourth Republic, we've had a uh, former president, late uh, John Fifiata Mills. Mm -hmm. uh, we've had the late Aliou Mahama. We've had um, former president John Dramani Mahama. Mm -hmm. And then we've had Dr. Mahmoud Baumia. So, no, sorry, uh, Dr. Pakasi Emisa mm -hmm. and then Dr. Mahmoud Baumia. And so, among these five gentlemen. Uh, let's not forget um, uh, Dr. Aka. Do oh, yes, Aka, who was Vice President to, yes. um, uh, Rawlings before Rawlings, Atta before, Mills. Before Atta Mills, yeah. yes. And so, 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 that makes them six gentlemen. Mm -hmm. And so, the six gentlemen, um, the article seems to suggest that among all these six gentlemen, um, these are uh, Dr. Baumia stand tall among them. So let's look at the credentials and the achievements of, of, of all six. Mm. But it will, it will make for a long conversation if we want to go after each of them. If there are some that you think are better than Dr. Yes. Baumia, let's so, hone in on those. So, so with the benefit of the current political dispensation, I want to pick John Romani Mahama, okay. who has also been a former vice president, mm -hmm. and let's compare his record to the record of Dr. Baumia. So his record as vice as president. As vice president, yeah, yeah. not his record as president, mm -hmm. his record as vice president, mm -hmm. and compare the, rec the record of Dr. Baumia. Now, Mr. President as vice president uh, took over as vice president in 2009, mm -hmm. after President Kofor has left office. Um, in fact, on the 3rd January, the IMF country director has written a letter to President John Ivan Sata Mills explaining or bemoaning the dire economic situation Ghana was in, about how bankrupt the country was and how severe you know, the country was going to be. As Convention 6, John Mahama was the head of the economic management team. And within two years, that is by 2011, 
Ghana has become the fastest growing economy. In fact, we've, been, in fact, we've, we've had um, several reports, you know, inflation has been reduced to 9.1%. You remember the famous single digit inflation, 9.1%. In fact, um, our GDP, you know, um, our GDP, we've had experienced monumental GDP growth, you know, and our, in fact, among emerging markets, you know, Ghana was, um, within one year, Ghana's economy, which had been written off by the World Bank, had turned around with the currency being the best performing currency among 24 emerging markets. Mm. And the emerging markets were Philippines, Malaysia, South Africa, Nigeria, Turkey, Russia, Mexico, Poland, Hungary, Brazil, Chile, Israel, Botswana. Mm -hmm. And these are the records. It's there for everybody to verify that by 2011, under John Mahama as the head of the community management team, um, Ghana has become the fastest growing economy in the world. Our currency was one of the best performing currency among 24 emerging markets mm. done by the World Bank. And so, at least, in terms of the management of the economy, that's the record of, of uh, Mr. Mahama as vice president. Now let's go to Dr. Baumia's record as vice president. He's been vice president for at least five years. Inflation currently is over 60%. We've seen the worst ever depreciation of our currency to the point that our Ghana city, under him, the Ghana city was, became the worst performing currency in the world. Even behind bankrupt and defaulted countries like Sri Lanka and Co. That is a record of Dr. Baumia. And so to put these scientific conversations into perspective and to say that under somebody as head of the economic management team, inflation was 9.1%. Your currency was one of the best performing currencies in the, in, in, in the world. And among another person, inflation is over 60%. Your currency is the worst performing currency. The, 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 the entire country is bankrupt. As we speak, We've, uh, we've, we've surpassed debt on sustainability levels. We are under a debt restructuring program. Mm. Government is even having difficulties to restructure the debt. Okay. And so how does anybody sit down and look at these scientific records and say, Dr. Baumia stand tall I'm in the Fourth Republic, even in the Fourth Republic, mm. as, yeah. a, as a best performing vice president? On what basis is that, did, did this person come to the point? And I'd be very happy if the person who wrote this article provided those variables that he stood on to make those, those assertions because they are not supported by the facts. Okay. And, I mean, uh, unless, of course, it was just conjecturing. Okay. But if it, was, if it was making an analysis based on economic data, based on the figures and the facts available, I'm sorry to say that um, he was, was making a very misplaced um, argument. Okay, so um, before I bring in Dr. Donfer, uh, to clarify your, your point, your point is that um, uh, Dr. Baumia was a better head of the economic management team, sorry, Dr. Uh, uh, former President Mahama was a better manager of the economic management team than Dr. Baumia. Well, that is not what I'm saying. That is what the facts are saying. Very good. I just wanted to be clear yes. because yes. Um, the article so, says mm -hmm. that uh, Dr. Baumia is the best vice president. The best that we've okay. had. So, uh, as you okay, can okay. imagine, vice president. Okay, uh, heading so, the okay. economic management team. It's, it's one, one of the, yes, one of one the, of the okay. Yeah. So, so let's go to that base. Mm -hmm. In terms of leading economic policy, let's look at the policies the vice president have led. That's still as head of as, as, a, as yes as head of yes team. yes the, all, all, all the policies yeah, look at this digital address system mm -hmm. that he brought mm -hmm. look at this um, um, how do you call it uh, his digital so called digitalization I, I don't even know how to pronounce the digitalization mm -hmm. agenda that's mm -hmm. what he calls it mm -hmm. now what is the record of that digitalization agenda he, what is one of the most viable optimal achievements? That you say, based on this digitalization agenda Dr. Baumia has pursued, one, it has increased government's revenue by this percentage, it has contributed to, to, to trade facilitation. I mean, there is no basis. Well, for, 80 percent for, for more people um, have tins uh, in Ghana today because of digitalization. What is its impact on government? The digital, because address, tin, because the digital address system actually leads people to locations where? in Ghana. Where? 
It does. If you type in the you, you are going address, to look for somebody. It will take you to, if you go, to the is, location. So if you're going to look for somebody, you, do you use do you use the, uh, a, a digital address? Yeah, the fact that I don't use it doesn't mean it doesn't work. No, the, the point is that nobody uses that thing that they wasted money on. Look does at the drones. Work? Look at the drones. Wasted money as we speak. Uh, and I expect that the media will be pursuing Actually, I'd like you to support that, the, the claim of the drones being wasted money. Where, where, see, what is the impact? You see, when you, when, you, when you make an investment into a certain project, you need to be able to measure the output of the project. Mm. It's been yeah. how many years now? So measure the output of where the Where is the records? Go to the drone centers. Mm -hmm. How many I've, facilities? I've been there. You've been there. Mm -hmm. Go to there now and go and see more function drones. And go and see how, what is the sole contrib major contribution of this uh, in a healthcare delivery system. Uh, there if, 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 there, there's documentation if of all the deliveries that the drone don't system have, has made it, it, uh, if, to remote areas, lives that have been saved by have, timely delivery of have blood, blood and see, other medications. Hospitals don't have blood, they don't have anti snake serums, they don't have essential medicines. But the drones are flying every day. So, so what are these drones flying? If you don't have blood, you don't have medicine, essential medicines, you don't have anti snake serums, you don't have the things, what are the drones flying? Well, but obviously, some hospitals just, are receiving, are receiving they're, these they're supplies. They're flying for, for, for recreational purposes. No, I think you have to be fair. No, so, no, the, the point I'm making is that, look, in terms of, if you're looking for policy failures, Dr. Baubian is a champion of policy failures. And you, the examples you are giving are given digital example, address all, system and yes, digitalization. Digitalization agenda okay. and the, the drone policy, okay. all the policy. And, and now the recent one is good for oil. And when I heard that, then I laughed. Okay. Now, let Go me tell you an example. Oil. You see, and, and, and I, I was wondering, could you, you've declared a debt default. Okay? You've declared a debt default. Government of Ghana has defaulted on, in its domestic debts. Why? On earth, will anybody who understands economics will declare a debt default when he knows that the monetary policy is going to use for economic recovery involves money supply in the economy? Who does that? Kojo, you've declared a default. It means that government securities and uh, the market, you've, you've destroyed the market. Now, you are going to take CDs, you say you're going to buy gold. Okay, you're going to buy gold and go and exchange the gold for oil. So you're going to supply, increase money supply in the economy. Okay, because when you buy the gold from the small scale miners, you give them, you pay them cities, right? So you, you are going to increase money supply in the economy. When you increase money supply in the economy, could you, the government instrument, the domestic market, securities market, which deals excess liquidity could have, would have gone to invest in, are all crashed. Nobody will invest in government. But you understand you, the economics, you, no, no, right? You, that you, the government that is spending less money on gold mm -hmm. to, than they would have had to spend if they were paying directly for the oil. No. You could understand you, that, could right? You, could you, I have been at the NPA, they've, they've listed, they, it's, this is what they are doing. Government just doesn't have the dollars. So they say that they will buy the gold with cities yes. and go and sell the gold for dollars and use the dollars to buy oil. Could you, and, but my argument is that when you buy the gold with CDs, okay, you increase money supply in the economy. But the excess liquidity, there is no, there is no fixed structured asset, asset class to absorb the excess liquidity. So what it means is that when you buy the gold from the small scale miners and the, and, and the local traders, they have no fixed income securities or investment market or asset class to invest the excess liquidity in. So they will rather go, they will, that, that excess liquidity will find its way back to the currency market to chase for dollars. So by the time, and if you look at the, the, the operation window, the whole program is for 60 days. By the time you finish, you, you, you finish one transaction, you yourself, through your own injection of excess liquidity into the market, you've depreciated, by, you've depreciated the currency by about 60%. Let me bring in Dr. So, George so, so you, The point I'm making is that if you're looking for the champion of policy failures, Dr. Baumia, okay. none of his policies ever works. None of his, all his ideas. All right. Let's bring in Dr. George Donfer now, uh, who is um, from the University of Ghana, Legon. Dr. Donfer, um, the claim here is that in spite of the fact that Ghana is back at the IMF, uh, the head of the economic management team, that happens to be Dr. Baumia, is the best vice president we've had so far. Uh, is that a position you would align with and what would your evidence be? Uh, my brother, let me thank you very much for this opportunity. 
And let me also say good uh, evening to our cherished uh, viewers and also uh, the, the man at the studio. Yes, yeah, uh, Mr. Mensa Thompson. Analysis. Yeah, 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 Mensa Thompson. I follow this analysis and uh, I can say that I'm really happy with his logic. And uh, so kudos to him. Kudos to him. I like how he started it, that uh, he, he didn't want to go back to 1992 to pick it from uh, Mr. Cohen Kenzenaka uh, down to Dr. Mahmoudou uh, Baumia, but I would like to look at the economy. And, uh, he picked it from 2009 and was saying that at that time, as soon as the President uh, Mills took over uh, and uh, President Mah uh, Mahama uh, became vice president, and IMF wrote a certain letter to talk about the fact that the economy at the time uh, was, was not doing well. <laughs> when I hear things like this, and I like how he says scientific, and I would want to pose a question to him how scientific was it, because that, well, I, I, I wish you could produce at the studio that particular letter that came from an IMF. And if it indeed- We have clarification I, I, I that it's from the World Bank. Yeah, and, and yeah, so on what ground? Because, uh, Kojo, uh, 2008, Ghanaian economy grew by 8.4%. I'm using 2006 constant prices. It grew by 8.6%, and that was the second highest economic growth after 1984. Since 1957, the best economic growth rate after 1984 was 2008. You know, and so if uh, an IMF or the World Bank or whoever that is quoting comes to tell us that the economy was in that situation, I don't understand. Uh, it's not scientific. It's also not um, logical. And so on that particular point, I think he needs to go back and revise his, uh, that phrase that the discussion should be scientific. If it is scientific, then I want to challenge him that it wasn't scientific. Again, let me prove to him that... Um, <coughs> Uh, Dr. Donfer on the line. Ghana, the debt to GDP ratio was 32 in 2000. You know, anytime you are debt to GDP ratio, uh, we say you are in debt crisis. And so here was the case, President, uh, of came to power to meet the debt to GDP ratio at 182% in 2006 constant crisis. In 2008, that my friend is saying the economy uh, was not doing well. Debt to GDP ratio had declined at the time. To 32. It was a record. In fact, indeed, it was 26 in 2006, soon after we had left. I'm happy. And by 2008, the fiscal space was so wide. And so if he sits there and he says he's doing scientific analysis and, and says that the economy was very bad, I don't know what he's talking about. And so I was following him and I want to know, I don't, I, unless, of course, I'm told. Uh, the word scientific, uh, the meaning of the word scientific has been changed. In that case, I will agree with him. One, my understanding of scientific uh, discussion is that discussions that are based on facts, discussions that are based on, you know, uh, truth. So, so let's have some facts on, and truth from you. Yeah, uh, okay, so going with the truth, uh, you talked about the fact that uh, 2011, yes, it is true, Ghanaian economy grew for 14%, um, and that has been our highest ever growth rate. No one can ever challenge it. That is our highest growth rate. But what he didn't tell you, and I wish he, he had said that, that it was because at that time we discovered oil in commercial quantities in 2007, and we started oil production in September 2010, by which reason to, uh, we had that economic growth rate. So it wasn't because that particular government in power at that time came with any deliberate policy, for which reason we had that growth. Indeed, industrial sector, has always been growing below 5%. But that particular year, we saw industrial sector where oil is growing at 41%. What was more, the, the entire uh, I mean, mining and quarry subsector, that has been struggling to grow above 5%. That year grew 208%. And this one, you don't need anybody to tell you that that growth that we achieved was oil inspired. And I wish you could tell us what happened without the oil. You know, and so if you're doing scientific analysis, you, you don't only tell them the story, I mean, that you don't tell one side the story. And All so, right, uh, let's address to, the claim uh, by this article yeah. that Dr. Baumia is uh, the okay. best yeah, yeah. I, I, uh, I vice do. president I, I, I in do. the Fourth Republic. Uh, in, my, in my view, as an economist, as an economist, I can attest to that 
uh, uh, if we are look, uh, we're looking for those who have done so well as vice president. In my opinion, and also as an economist, uh, I agree with the article. And let me pick it number one from where Dr. Baumia came to meet the economy and he started supervising, uh, you know, as a, as a head of the economic management team. My brother, at the time he came to power as a vice president, uh, the economy was growing at 3.4% in 2013 concern prices. The economy was in debt crisis in 2006 concern prices. The debt was 73.1% uh, of GDP. That was our debt at, at the time in 2006 concern prices. And so we were in debt crisis. We had subscribed to, uh, you know, uh, extended credit facility arrangements with an IMF April 2015. And April 2015, the economy that grew 2.1%. That did very well in 2016, growing at 3.4%. And indeed, the economy also. Right. Um, uh, uh, let's see if we can reconnect with um, Dr. Donfe for him to continue his analysis. Doc Dr. Donfe, can you hear me? Oh, I'm back, man. Fantastic. Yeah, I can yeah. hear you. I'm back. Please, please go ahead. I'm back. Yeah, so I'm saying that uh, this is just how we do scientific analysis. 2017, in fact, the most important indicator that we use to measure growth of an economy and the health of an economy is economic growth. And 2017, uh, 15, 2016, when the economy didn't grow well, 2017, we saw the economy growing over 8%. And that's one, I, I will not sit here and say that the 2017 growth rate was because of Dr. Baumia. No, if I do that, it's not scientific. You know what? 2015, 2016, Ghana discovered new oil fields. And so, with or without Dr. Baumia, 2017, the economy was going to grow far better than it did in 2016. And we saw the economy growing over 8% in 2017. But you see, if you knock out the growth, I mean the oil effect, the economy grew 4.8% when Dr. Baumier took over the first year, when he took over as the leader of the economic management team. The economy grew 4.8% without oil. Without oil, we went over I mean, 8%. And I'm saying that with that oil, I will not attribute it to um, Dr. Baumier, just as I did not attribute 2011 growth to I mean, uh, you know, an NDC government, you know, mm. at the time. I wouldn't do that. So it wasn't because of Dr. Baumia. But what we saw was that the real sector did very well. When I talk about the real sector, I'm talking about the agricultural sector, manufacturing. They picked mm. up a bit. And uh, yeah. with that, we saw the economy uh, with non-oil sector, non-oil economy growing 4.8%. So if you want mm. to see what Dr. Baumia did to help, then that was it. And that growth, 48 growth rate, we achieved was, I mean, the highest, the highest uh, since, uh, uh, you know, 2014. And so I would say that that one we saw what he was doing. But my, my, my brother, significantly, significantly, for 15 good years running, Ghana has continuously recorded negative primary balance. I don't know whether my brother doing scientific analysis understands what we mean by primary balance. When we talk about primary balance, it's about your expenditure and your and revenue. Do you, are you able to generate enough to cover your current expenses? If you generate enough to cover your uh, current expenses, minus interest payments, minus interest payments, if you have enough to cover all your other expenses, we say uh, you are, you are, you've recorded positive primary balance. What it means is that had it not been for the the, the interest payments that you have to earn, uh, you were able to generate enough revenue, so much so higher than uh, what you have been an asset were raking in. And uh, again, you also were able to control your expenditure. So what did Dr. So Baumia do to the primary balance? Exactly. That, you, that one you can't attribute to, to anybody by, uh, by him as the head of the economy management team. Ghana recorded positive primary balance for the first time in 15 years, in 2017. What it means is that without our debt, uh, you know, repayments, we would have had enough, we generated more, more revenue than we needed. Right. 2018, that continued, 2018, Ghana recorded positive primary balance. Please, please and please, I want you to be going to, I mean, reading all these things from Ghana's budget as I'm talking. Right. 2019, Ghana again recorded positive primary balance. 
something that has eluded us for so long, 15 good years. In 2017, uh, sorry, 2017 years, we recorded first ever positive primary balance in 15 years. My brother, that was not it alone. Um, since President, when President Kufo came, I'm, 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 I'm speaking to the debt that has today become our problem. Today, our debt to GDP ratio has gone way beyond the 70% threshold. And Ghana is today in debt crisis. So let me talk a little bit about what Dr. Baumia and his uh, team did. Time. I, I, I'm going to ask you to conclude, please. There isn't a lot of time. Yeah, 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 yeah. So when, uh, when uh, uh, President Kufo came and he met the debt to GDP ratio at 82%, and I went everybody to check the 2006 constant prices. President Kufo left it at 33%. My brother, by 2014, debt to GDP ratio had gone to 71%. And any time your debt to GDP ratio crosses um, the threshold of 70% mark, we say you are in debt crisis. Your debt has become unsustainable. That is the technical term that we use for it. And so Ghana's debt, that was 32, and that's why uh, it surprises me more mm. to hear uh, scientific analysis now telling the whole world that 2019, the economy, I mean, 2018, the economy wasn't in a better shape. Uh, we were doing very well. My brother, then 2014, we went into the debt crisis where we were. And so at that time, uh, it was the only difference was that Ghana was a low income country. And so we couldn't have gone for an HAPIC. We were in HAPIC status. Just as today, I can say that we are also in HAPIC and in status. Uh, that that brother, is an important we, point, isn't it? That today, uh, yeah, we are back yeah, so today, at that yeah, status. Yeah, yeah, so today, we are, uh, yeah, and I'm, I, I, I'm running there quickly. When uh, President... Uh, I mean, Kufuadu took over and President, uh, uh, Vice President uh, Dr. Baumia became the leader of the, you know, uh, economic management team. That to GDP ratio was 73.1%. I'm talking about 2006 concern prices. My brother, uh, by 2017, that to GDP ratio declined to 68.9, and we were out of the wood. And this happened. This happened for the first time since 2006. From 2006, every year, debt to GDP ratio was going up by uh, on average of about five percentage points on average. But we saw the debt to GDP ratio. De right. Uh, I think I'll have to take the opportunity here to get a very quick rebuttal from yeah. uh, Mr. Mensa Thompson, and then we'll get conclusion from. Uh, Dr. Donfe, uh, the, our time is so limited, so I'll push you. Yes, could you? I mean, sitting here, I think that any Ghanaian who is watching Dr. Donfe blab so much will be very, very upset. You know, and there's no amount of numbers he throws around can whitewash the incompetence of Dr. Baumia. Dr. Are his numbers wrong, though? Yes, very wrong. For example, in 2009 2010, non oil growth was 8%. In 2011, it was 7%. So in those numbers he's throwing around, and in fact, he says, he, he claims that in 2011, it was because we had discovered oil and that's why the economy grew. As we speak, in that, that time, it was just one oil well. Today, we have three. And look at where our economy is. And you want to say Dr. Baumia is a better manager of the economy? Dr. Baumia is the only head of the current management team under whose tenure a whole 40-man team had to be set up by the government to manage the depreciation of the city. Uh, it has never also, happened under anybody. You could also argue that he's the only head of the economic management team who has had to navigate COVID, uh, Ukraine war, uh, uh, banking crisis, banking sector crisis cleanup, and of course the famous uh, uh, um, energy sector uh, you know, um, uh, payments. Uh, uh, when he was talking about 2018 figures and saying how the economy, how the economy was doing so, well, didn't you hear him? Look, I, I, I don't know what, what that, how that negates the fact that he has to deal with all of these issues. How, how did he deal with it? Look at, it, does this economy look like an economy that has been dealt in anybody? COVID has practically, and is, I, wouldn't even, I wouldn't even go there because the COVID argument is flawed. Well, you were about because to say, it, you were yes, about to say yes, COVID has practically... Yeah, yeah, yeah because, because, the COVID, because the COVID argument is what they want you to believe. But if you look at the economic data, our economy was written off. Our debt level had, been, had gotten to unsustainable levels way before COVID. In, in 2019, first quarter, second quarter, third quarter, we missed all revenue targets. We were practically bankrupt. That was the COVID year. 2019? Yeah. 2019 was COVID? COVID was 2020. So where from all those analysis? We won't even give them the benefit of the doubt. I have said, and I, I like the fact that Dr. Bonfe 
could not say emphatically that Dr. Baumia is the best vice president among all the names we've mentioned. He could not, because he knows that the evidence does not support it. So Dr. Baumia is actually, if you're looking for the West, the West, not even in the Fourth Republic. And I've, and, I, and I've said, I said that, Dr. Baumia is the champion of policy failures. Give me one policy spearheaded by Dr. Baumia that has been successful. One. If you give me one, I'll get up and leave this studio right now. One, that, oh, this policy that Dr. Baumia implemented has yielded positive results. It has impacted positively on the economy. Zero. Uh, He's a champion of economic failure. What? Some argue that digitalization has had a positive what? impact on the economy. How? Well, if you look at the fact that at the moment when you go to the ports, uh, certain systems that were all manual are now digital, mm -hmm. you can track them. Mm -hmm. If you look at the fact that today, everybody has, well, yeah. everybody has access to a Ghana card, which means that you will be a traceable commercial entity which, who can be correctly taxed based on your, um, the, the, your use of money, whether it's in the formal or informal Could system. you, as we sit here... Can you, can you write off any of these achievements? Could you, as we sit here, your pension is under threat. Okay, now you're changing the subject. No, I said I, you said that we should name one. That's what I'm uh, telling you. Okay, so I'm I, telling I you that, that your pension is under. I suspect threat. that anybody would point to digitalization that, that, and say it has you, worked. How has that impacted on the positive on the economy? I've just explained. How? I've explained that now. You, how, everybody how does it, holding has, a Ghana card? Could you? How does holding a Ghana card? Apart from this, by force regulation, they, they brought to the commercial banks that the Ghana card is the only card you can use for any transaction at the banks. What else is the Ghana card useful for? The Ghana card is the also is also the only uh, accepted identification for registering your phone, which means that, that whether is, you are moving money formally or could you, informally, could you, are you saying that without the Ghana card we couldn't register our phones? Without Ghana card, we weren't buying mo uh, SIM cards and registering our phones. No, but is that, that what is, you're saying? No, I'm saying that the current reality uh -huh. is that as part the of the current reality is because somebody go do a useless card, which is not making any any impact on the economy, but he has to inf you know enforce a policy that will make the card. Useful. I, 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 I'm hoping that you will address reality. Here. That's what I'm addressing. Tell us, tell us realistically, mm -hmm. how has digitalization failed? Could you realistically, this government, nobody, including Dr. Bonfell, who speaks for Dr. Baumia or Dr. Baumia's skills or Dr. Wigidio Boakun, can be able to tell us, provide data that this is how much. Government's digitalization agenda has increased to revenue. As we speak, why are we at the IMF begging for three billion? Now we have to undergo a whole debt restructuring that put people's pension under threat, mm. people's investment under threat because we're looking for three billion because mm. government cannot raise domestic revenue. All right, let's and, uh, and you are saying let's, that let's get a final rebuttal agenda. from um, could, could you, Dr. Dongfei. You know, our time, lot, our time is up. You spoke a great deal and before. And a lot of the things that he well. said, I've not so, been able to. Yeah, uh, Dr. Dongfei, I'm afraid you have just two minutes. Uh, we would like to hear your yeah, wrapping yeah, up comments. Uh, yeah, and uh, in fact. Uh, even though I was, I, I mean, I'm not at the studio. Sorry to say you are not being fair to me because my brother spoke so long. No, you, you spoke didn't longer than him. You did speak longer uh, than okay. him. I'm trying to be as fair oh, okay, as possible. Then. So two, uh, two oh, minutes okay, for you, please. Okay, okay thanks. Oh, oh, okay, thanks. Quickly. So I was saying that that to GDP ratio went down for the first time in 2017, and indeed 2018 will rebase I mean, the economy. Kojo. When we rebase the economy debt to GDP ratio, that would have been 73.1 percent in December 2016, became 59 and 55.9. Because though for three continuous years, by the end of 2019, debt to GDP ratio was 62.5. And so, if my brother says at the studio to lie to the whole Ghana that, that we were in debt crisis, he doesn't understand what he's talking about. 2019, we were not. Uh, okay. Uh, when you are when you are that when the debt to GDP ratio hits 70 percent threshold, that's where you are in danger. We, we were doing 62.5 percent, and he's talking about the revenue. Revenue, revenue went before Dr. Bami came. I mean, you check his records where every year that, that, tax and fair. revenue was going up by two million. I mean, two billion Ghana cities. And so when it was 31 billion at the end of 2016, we all were expecting it around I mean, 35. But we had over 41 billion. The following year, we went to 49. We were doing well, except that that their targets were so high. They were setting unrealistic you know, um, targets, and some of us complained to um, GRA. Uh, and otherwise, they were doing well. That is why we recorded positive primary balance. 
I want you to tell me that I mean that was not um, true. I'd love, were not I'd well love to are. hear you in the I, la in your last that. 30 seconds addressing the claim that digitalization is a failed policy of, of the vice president. Uh, in, in fact, in fact, sitting there, he doesn't even understand what he's talking about. One thing that if that had allowed me, I would have talked about this. One district, one factory. Because today, manufacturing sector is growing over eight percent. You should tell me why <laughs> it is so. Agricultural sector, the crop and livestock production, we have never seen it doing so well in the past 40 years as it has done in the last five years. I'm talking about crop and livestock production. And it's all because of deliberate government I mean, policies. Dr. That Doctor, we're going to have to go. Uh, anything know. on digitalization so, so or about, should we just wrap up? Yeah, in fact, yeah, uh, uh, if, uh, digitalization and digitalization, all of them combine to help with structural transformation. Today we are trying to restructure our economy to move away from the agriculture led to the manufacturing. You know, we leapfrogged to the tertiary, and we are trying to, you know, reset the economy. And that's why the I mean, agenda to industrialize I mean, this country. You should okay. tell me, well, since 1957, whether after the demise of Kwame Nkrumah from the public housing, whether there has been any deliberate attempt by any government to industrialize this country so much slower as it is I'm currently happening. Very you know, good. Unfortunately, uh, COVID. Yeah. Unfortunately, I'm Russian invasion. So many things have come. If you are okay. me, sir. Okay, Doctor Donfair. Thank you so but much um, for your time with us. I wish we had more time. Uh, this is a conversation that obviously uh, would catch fire if we had more time to get me. into it. I'm afraid we don't have any more no, time. Pedro, thank you I, both so much, studio. Mr. Mensah Thompson I, Pedro, and Dr. Donfair, for you. contributing to I came our to conversation. We appreciate it very much. We're going to take a quick break when we come back. Uh, a few more stories. Stay with us.